Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a tutorial about animating textures. This is inspired by KDA's A Villain Music Video. In there, the car that Evelyn drives, the textures start to morph and change into like a snake skin into something smoother. It's a really cool effect and I want to try to recreate it using Maya's Arnold. So let's see what I can come up with. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just create a basic cloth. Uh, next, I am going to assign a new material and I'm going to, of course, use an AI standard surface shader. We have two materials that we have to work with. One is this purple silky material and another one looks like snake skin. Um, so I am going to go ahead and create both of those at this time. So the first one is going to be the purple silk. Of course, I'm going to grab a purple color. And I am going to need a light, so Arnold Physical Sky, so that we can see something. And I'm going to go into my show and hide the lights because I find that dark background distracting. All right, the next thing is trying to get that really fun specularity that it has. So let's see what we have right now. Not much to look at, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and keep working on our purple silk. So here we have our... I think it's actually a little bit darker and we definitely want it to be reflective. So I am going to decrease the roughness to about 0.1. And it appears that the material is made out of, um, it's almost metallic. So that means that I need to increase my metalness. Now it really depends on the range of metalness I have to go with, but let's see what happens if I crank it all the way up to one. So we're getting some really interesting um, effects. Now there's not much for it to reflect with, so I might have to a little bit of depth to this object. So let's go ahead and increase my divisions pretty high because I am going to be using dynamics. I'm gonna create something that it will um, land. And again, this is just to, be, just to kind of get some wrinkles. I'm gonna make this slightly crooked, uh, make this significantly bigger and just kind of Give it a little bit of an angle. Hopefully it's not intersecting. So in effects, I'm going to go to end cloth, create uh, end cloth. And this is going to be my end cloth, create passive collider and rewind. Give yourself a little bit more time. So maybe 300 frames and hit play. As you can see, it's a little slippery. So I'm going to stop, rewind. And I'm going to give this a little bit more uh, friction. So I'm going to increase my friction to 100. And don't forget that your cloth also has friction. So open up the collisions and increase the friction as well. So make sure you increase the friction on both of them, both the collider and the passive. So let's go ahead and simulate this. I'm liking the results a lot better. And I'm running out of time. So I'm going to have to stop, give myself a little bit more time. Let it settle, hurry up, and stop. Is that enough? Maybe a couple more frames here. By a couple, I mean another 100. Oops. And I'm just going to try to let it settle a little bit more in the ground. OK, let's see what we have here. Let's see what it looks like when we render. Way better. It definitely looks metallic. It definitely looks like cloth. I think we can use this. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this because this is my working file and I'm going to duplicate the cloth and then I'm going to rewind and I'm going to go ahead and turn off enable because I don't need this to be used again, but I might want to keep the cloth. I'm going to hide it and if these things are distracting to you, you can just go ahead and hide the dynamics. You can hide the end cloth and the end rigid. And if you want to, you can also hide the dynamics so it's not distracting to you. If the grid's on the way, just go ahead and hide the grid. All right, so now we have this. We have a regular piece of cloth. It now has some metallic sheen on it. So it looks something like this. Let's go ahead and render a little bit closer. All right, it's looking like this. Now, according to the video, there's a lot more to it. Um, it's got a lot more color variation in it. So I'm going to go back into my purple silk and I am going to give it a thin film. Now the thin film is going to give you a little bit of kind of like an interesting color variation to the top layer. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And I'm going to 
make a selection because my computer is really chugging. So I'm going to make a selection just so we can just focus on a particular area. And I'm going to press hit play and I hope my computer can handle it as I move the thickness around so you guys can see how this color variation changes. So it's really up to you what type of color you want. I want a little bit of blue purples, maybe something like that. Again, it's a whole you can this is how oil is created if you guys are curious. But I'm going to go with maybe something like this. This is looking pretty interesting. Um, I feel like the metal might be a little strong, so I might decrease it. And I think I'm actually relatively happy with that appearance. I can increase the roughness a little bit more. But I think I'm going to go ahead and move on to the snake skin. So let me just render this whole thing so you guys can see what it looks like. All right, there we go. I'm going to take a snapshot of it and don't forget to stop the render and of course, save the scene. So file, save or save as. All right, so the next shader we need to work on is the snake skin. It appears that the material is very similar to the metalness, but it has scales. What I can do is go to my hypershade, grab the purple shader that I just made. And if I want to, I can edit, duplicate, and then go to the shading network. And this will create a purple silk and you'll see a value next to it. Then reassign it. And by the way, you guys can actually grab the snakeskin shader and drag it onto the model and it will pick it up. It's gonna look exactly the same as before because it is the same shader, but I'm going to be changing a couple of things. One is going to be that it's gonna have a bump map of scales. And doing a quick image search, I found this bump map that I can use to give me a bit of a scale appearance. So let's see what that looks like. And I believe it's a repeating texture, so it should be okay. Let's go ahead and scroll down until we find geometry. We're gonna go to bump mapping, file, click on the bump value with this little output connection, and then hit that folder. Select your scales, press the number six on your keyboard if you wanna see some of the results. And you can see that it's already there, but let's see what it looks like in the render. So you'll notice that the scales are massive, which isn't really helping us. And you can also see that the bump map is too strong, which is getting rid of the cool scaly and uh, a nice metallic reflection. So let's go to the bump map. I'm gonna go to the placement node up here at the top right and repeat my UVs by, let's say five by five, just to see what that looks like. So this is what the scales look like so far. I might wanna go a little bit uh, larger or smaller. I guess the scales can be smaller, so maybe seven by seven. Uh, up here at the top, there's a little connection that will take you back to the file. And then if you click it one more time, it will take you to the bump value. I really want to reduce this to maybe half the bump value so it's not so strong. So let's see what that looks like. It's not bad. Um, let me go a little bit less. Let's do 0.1 just to really make sure that it's just a subtle. And some of that is still coming back, but it still feels really strong. So let me go into my bump value here, go to my color balance and try to bring these colors a little bit closer together. As long as they're closer together, they'll be able to kind of reduce the uh, the contrast. So that's another way you can control your values. All right, I'm starting to get that highlight back. Let's uh, keep reducing those uh, values. I also reduced the exposure so it's not so shiny. I find the scales to be really strong. All right, I'm gonna go crazy, 0.05. Okay, maybe it's not that crazy, but well, I'm getting closer. I'm gonna hit stop and maybe go 0.02. So I played a little bit more and I dropped it down to 0 0.009. It's very, very subtle. I really just wanted to make sure that we can see something that looks like scales. So I'm going to go back and this time I want to play a little bit more with the thickness because I wanted to get a little bit more of a different color. So when, when we have that transition between the metallic silk and versus this, it will look different. So let's go ahead and play around with the thickness a little bit more. Hopefully my computer can handle it as I move around the... the I wanted to have a different look, maybe a little bit more blue. And I might want to increase the roughness. So let me increase the roughness a little bit. So it kind of breaks up that uh, perfect sheen. So it's not perfect, it's not exactly like the video, but I think I'm getting the concept behind it. So I have two types of material. I have this one that's very shiny and basically metallic, and this one is also metallic, but it's got the snake skin on it. Now, another thing that I noticed in the video is that one is a little bit more in the pink, so I might actually crank the color in this one, and the other one's more deeper purple. So I think that's also gonna help us see that transition. 
All right, one last time with the thickness, just because I like playing around with this. I think it's cool. I'm gonna get that blue back if I can. Let's go the other way. Now it's getting deep purple. Something like there, cool. All right, let's go ahead and I'm going to go back into my existing material. I'm going to go back to purple silk just so I can look. So I'm going to take a snapshot. It's, it's not a great render, but it should give me enough information. And for this one, I'm going to go to a deeper purple. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this down to the left so it's darker. Okay, that might be too dark. And I want, I'm starting to change things here. So let me see if I can get a little bit more of that red purple. Oh, well, let's go for, I want it to keep the deep purple. All right, something like that. So if we see both of them change, you'll be able, I mean, the contrast is gonna be extremely high, but that's okay, at least we'll see the difference. All right, so now that I have these two shaders, I can go back into my hypershade and I'm gonna mix them together. So I'm gonna create a new tab here and I'm gonna grab the snake and the purple and click on this little guy right here, which will map both of them. So you can see that one's a snake and the other one has purple. So I'm gonna hit one, um, two. Oh, I'm just gonna hit one for this one. And that one's fine because it's small because I just wanna make sure that they, are, they don't take up so much space. By the way, if you hit one, two, three, and four, that's how you can get those in your keyboard. That's how you can kind of break those together. You can reveal all those menus. All right, AI mix shader. So hit tab on your keyboard, grab an AI mix shader, and I'm gonna grab this little tail, actually hit two, grab the out color connected to shader one, grab the out color for purple silk and connect it to shader two. Now I need to assign this. So right click, assign existing material and choose an AI mix shader. Now this is gonna mix both of them together. Let's see what that looks like with our render. All right, so this is what it looks like so far. Now we need a map that's gonna help us transition from one shader to the other. So what I'm gonna be using is probably a ramp just because it'll make it easier to, uh, to control. So I'm gonna go back into my hypershade and I'm gonna hit tab and I'm going to grab is a ramp texture. And you can see it over here. I have an out color, but if I try to connect it to the mix, it's not gonna work. So hit that little plus sign grab that R and drag it into the mix. So what it's gonna do is that it's going to grab, use the black and white image of red connected to the mix, which you can only accept black and white. And I'm gonna bring these values together so we can see the effect. Now this plane has been UV mapped because I haven't really changed the shape of it other than like the wrinkles. It's still a square map, so I don't have to worry about uh, UV mapping. So you can see the effect of one and the other. There's a transition between one texture and the other based on these colors. So the next part is basically what direction do you want? Do you want it to be um, diagonal? So for example, you can choose uh, instead of the V ramp, you can use diagonal. And there's a couple of other ones, but I'm going to stick to diagonal and then I'm going to animate the shading. In the video, the scales are more dominant and then the purple kind of takes over. So that's according to the video. So I'm gonna try to mimic something similar. So there's going to be a little bit of a gray area in the middle. So if I bring these two colors together, it's gonna help with the transition. And instead of linear, you can choose smooth, which will help smooth out that gradient so you don't have such a sharp edge. So let's see what that looks like. It looks something like this. I didn't render it all the way, but I can see already the idea that it's kind of fading into one and the other. So we are going to animate these colors. If I move this black all the way to the left and then this one all the way to the left as well, you'll notice that the purple is completely dominant. So we wanted to do the opposite. So I'm gonna grab all of these to the right and I'm gonna seriously put it on top of one another so it's completely black. That's gonna show the snake skin. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is right click on the selected, whoops, let me close that window. Uh, you're gonna right click and hold on the selected position of black and say set keyframe. Now you're not gonna be able to see it on the timeline, just FYI, and then after that, what you're gonna do is go to, I don't know, let's say we want this to happen in about 60 frames and you're gonna change this to zero. 
Again, right click, set keyframe. So during this period, the black, as you can see, the black from zero to 60 is going to move. We have to do the same thing to the color white. So select the color white. And we actually want it to start a little bit later in this animation. So around maybe frame, I'm going to say 15, go ahead and right click and set key. Then we're going to go a little bit past 60. So there's a lit like maybe 65 and change this to zero. There he goes. Oops. Uh, let's go to point zero zero one. So it basically takes over the whole thing almost and then set key. So what it's going to look like is there's going to be this transition. So you can see how as I go through the timeline, it kind of goes through that way. All right, let's see what that looks like. I'm just going to be hitting a couple of frames to play. So this is around frame 14. Oop, went too far. Um, this is around, my timing might be a little off, but you guys can see the transition as the white is taking over and then it completely takes over. And that is basically how you can animate and render this animated shader. So with that being said, what I'm going to do is get my camera really close. Turn this on just to make sure I've got a nice look here. Try to get a little bit close so I can get an interesting render. My lighting, of course, is not the same as the music. So if you wanted to push the lighting a little bit more, you can. And if you do not know how to render animations, then I encourage you to take a look at my video, which I have, which I will post uh, below, and you can probably see above, um, is um, how to render your animation. So take a look at that video if you don't know how. And there you have it. It's a little fast uh, in the transition. I would have to go back in there and play with the gradient animation. But in general, you can see that one shader is is visible and then the other one hides. So it's pretty fun. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how they created that really cool effect in the KDA villain music video. And there you go. Hopefully you guys found this interesting. Let me know by leaving a comment below. Did you learn something from this uh, video? I would love to hear from you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, uh, click on that little bell so you don't miss any of the updates. And if you have any other recommendations, please leave them below in the comments. I would love to hear what you think and also what other tutorials you would like to see. If you have time, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. That is my website where you can find free downloads, free ebooks, free trainings, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And keep creating, and I will see you next time.